Hi. Hello, Max. Hello, Hello Diara. <laughs> Jara. <laughs> Do you mind introducing yourself, please? My name is Jara Pui. I am from Senegal, West Africa, and I moved to Carpinteria when I was eight years old. Where is Carpent Carpinteria? Is Carpinteria. Where? It's 60 miles away from LA, north. Okay. Yeah. It's a small little town, beach town. Really cute. Uh, we're doing collaging while talking in a podcast because yes. it's called innovation. Wait, so wait real quick. What are you going for in your collage? And also, <clears throat> so Juliet, my girlfriend, told me about Jara's uh, love for collaging and that's why we're collaging. But why do you like collaging and what are you going for in your collage? Um, I always like to go for um, a surreal type of effect. Okay. So kind of just like go wild. Um, I don't know if she showed you any of mine, but like mine are mostly in Photoshop, so I don't do them. Oh, they're digital. They're digital. Oh, that's super so cool. So I just scan prints from magazines. Um, but this is so fun to just do it like in hand. In hand. I don't think I've made a collage since I was probably like in elementary school. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. But is it like is that like one of your main things? Like you make collages. So I or? did that um, in high school at the boarding school um, for my senior year, like. Thesis. little little project yeah it wasn't really a thesis it was just like a you could choose like i didn't want to do any sports because i was just like over it so i was like in varsity art that's what they called it varsity, varsity art. art yeah <laughs> that's funny. but i don't think there's any varsity letters for it but i had i was in varsity art and so i chose to do um, a project where i uh, just made digital collages um and then it People like them, so then they were like, "Can I buy it? Like, can I have it?" And I was like, "Okay." Buy it? Yeah, people wanted to like purchase like um, posters and things like that. Was from that it. your classmates or your professors like my, or? Yeah, my friends and just people in general, like um, that I knew. They were like, "Jara, please, like, I want, I want to see more." Blah blah blah. And so I started selling them just as spoke as posters. That's um, sick. So yeah. In high school. Yeah, and yeah. then. I made an Instagram, and I have, and I just post, I just make them randomly. What's the Instagram called? It's like, it's called Pigeon Dreams. Okay. Um, that's, that was just like a random name I came up with, because my collages are like dream states in a way. Yeah. Um, Where do you get yeah. your ideas for them from? Um, so I guess my inspiration came from like modernism and like surrealism, like movement, I okay. guess. It started like that, and then I, I just kind of did my own thing with it and just went off and just made like crazy, like weird, like surreal atmospheres. But mostly like they turned out to be like, mostly subject, like su the subjects were women. Okay. Um, and was that just like a personal? It just came out of nowhere. Yeah. So it was like random. I was like, how, like all of them are like, I, I, I just saw like a theme. I was like, oh my gosh, what does this mean? And then I just realized like, I just love women and I'm always like for like women's rights and like I just think women are amazing and powerful and strong mm -hmm. so I just kind of went with that um, and I guess I kind of embedded my identities like in my collages through your art through, through my art yeah that's kind of what I realized because I'm black I'm queer I am a woman I am an immigrant yeah. <laughs> I'm from Senegal like there's so many things that yeah, um, you have a lot, to a lot of identities yeah so there's so many things that um, like that are on my plate <laughs> about yeah. like my identity so it just kind of became that okay. so i guess i subconsciously made them like that would you say the women's thing definitely dominates your like do you most identify as a woman or as like queer or as like from senegal like which one like speaks to you the so most, that's you that's the hard part because it's like there's so many expectations of me yeah through my family that like i have to be like this pure woman um, who is supposed to get a husband and have kids and be Muslim. Like my family's Muslim, so okay. that's like, a, it's like that type of expe expectation for me. Yeah. Um, which I'm, as a kid, like it was really hard, like being the only like African people in the neighborhood and then trying to like figure out like American society's like culture and then my culture at home. So it was like, it's like, it's still very hard to like differentiate, I guess. Between? Between the different expectations, okay. I guess, so. So what, like moving to America, did your your family have like expectations for you as yeah. far as what they wanted and so, what, what did they lay those out exactly. to Exactly, so um, how deep are we getting? 
dude, we have two hours of card space on okay, this. Okay, so I'll, I guess I'll give an example. So, like, in high school, Deep. I participated in this thing called the Day of Silence, okay. which is, like, for queer people, like, to help um, raise awareness to people being silenced mm -hmm. um, because of their identities as queer people or if they're bi, if they're gay, if they're lesbian or whatever. Yeah. And so I, I took... Um, I like signed up to like put a sticker on my um, on me and that says like ally um, and I'd be silent for the day so everyone could, could like participate it's like fair. it was really fun yeah and interesting and so, but I had class that day with my dad your dad's teaching teaching so he was what, teaching me what French. grade was this um sophomore year okay, or something you. like that and I went into class and he was so mad at me for for supporting yeah the and did he know you were, you were queer no. at the time? No. Does he know now? No. Really? Yeah. So wow. if so, he's like said it like all the time. He's like, if you guys are ever not Muslim or if you guys are ever, um, you know, gay or whatever, like I'm kicking you out, like all this stuff. Yeah. So no, they don't know at all. So it's like a whole like thing that, that way. So been, that's kind of. How has that been for you personally? Not though? good. Yeah. Because it's just like a, it's like you're constantly like lying. Um, every day and like constantly because I you still live with them yes okay. I am moving out soon just because I'm like I can't be in this environment but um, it's like it's like his culture I guess or like how how he was raised and like the Islamic religion even though like not every single Muslim like believes that yeah he, he does and so he's like I'm keeping you guys from like going to hell. I'm keeping you guys from all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And so when that day of silence happened, he didn't speak to me for like two weeks. He like shunned me. Like he wouldn't like like shake my hand. Like because just in, from like just from that. that. Yeah. So yeah. even like if I wasn't, he was still mad. Like that I was like you know supporting it, and I I was like in in shock that he was like that annoyed because I did it because I didn't think he would care that much, but he did. And that's when I realized like oh my god like I'm living in this weird like in between because like yeah. all my friends are supporting this and I and I really support it and I had friends who were queer or like gay or whatever and um, and I was like but I love my friends like they're not going to hell like they're really smart they're cool they're like amazing they're people, people yeah. you know what I mean mm -hmm. so I was like battling like why is it bad like what is this like thing that like isn't I don't know I just couldn't was it his interpretation of like the Quran I think so or like what his parents may have like instilled yeah. in him yeah it's like um okay. and even in Senegal like right now like it's very like homophobic like okay. it's all homophobic is it legal no that's crazy so you know what I mean so yeah. it's like it's just like a no it's like a big taboo thing but I just in my mind like at that age I was like what I want everyone to be like free I want everyone to like love whoever they want, I want everyone to, you know, believe whatever they want to believe, you know? Be but it's very, yeah, exactly. Do, yeah. So then it was just like, it's still like, har like hard to like battle that. You're like, what is right and what is wrong? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when I also had like a, I was also like battling like, do I believe in this religion? Like that I'm being raised in. Yeah. Um, so. And how much had you like aligned yourself with that um, beforehand? <laughs> oh my God. Ah! <laughs> Come here. We need this, very important. So beforehand, like in Senegal, like when I was a kid, I thought everyone was, I thought everyone was Muslim. Like that's what I thought. Everyone, in like the world. globally? Yeah. Really? Until what age? Until I came to the United States. So I guess you were eight then. Yeah, so okay. I was really young and I just thought like, oh, everyone believes the same thing. Yeah. Like, and this is how life is. But then when I moved, I was like, what? Like everyone is different. Like there's so many different people around this world. Like I didn't know like this is how it is, you know? But I still was, I had identifying with Islam and I was praying like five times a day and I was like, you know, doing everything that's right, yeah. you know, to do because I was scared of hell. Like I was really scared. Okay. You know what I mean? And did your parents instill that fear into you or was that the it was, Quran or? It was like. Have you read just, the Quran? Um, like that's the thing. Yeah. So one of the reasons why I, I was like debating the religion because my, to my dad, I was like, I don't understand what I'm like saying when I'm praying because you're when, cause when, cause when you pray, you're like you're saying all these like things in Arabic and then you're like kneeling down, like doing all these yeah, uh, motions. Yeah. Um, and to him, I was like, when I was really like struggling, I was like, with I don't know sexuality with my, with, with the religion. Okay. The religion. I was just like, 
I don't understand like what I'm saying. Like I want to know what I'm saying. And he was like, don't worry about it. Like you don't have to know what you're saying. So that was like, what? Like, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't so know what I'm doing. So you pray in Arabic without knowing. Yeah. So that's what wow. made me like really like, what am I doing? Like, I don't understand this. Cause I started like actually like thinking for myself. I was like, hmm, like what is this? You know? And that was around eight you said? That was actually, that was like in high school. Oh wow. Okay. So like I was still like identifying with Islam and I was like, yeah, this is what I have to do. Cause I have to not go to hell. You know what I mean? Yeah. And in in Senegal, like there was this commercial that really like made, that really scared me. I, I like told my, my friend this once. Like an advertisement? Yeah, it was on TV. I was like so young and I was looking at the TV. I think it was like a cartoon playing or something. And then the commercial came on and it was like this boy, this like teenager, teenage boy, he was listening to music or like playing video games with, instead of praying. Mm -hmm. And in the commercial, um, his, his dad was like, oh, go pray like, like, or you're gonna go to hell, like go pray. And then this he's is like on an ad and on an ad TV. and and I was so wow. scared and then he and then he he didn't pray he he just kept playing video games or on his phone and then he wakes up and he's in hell wow or like he like he like has a dream that he's in hell and like these these white men these not white men but like men in cloaked like white like sheets are are carrying him or like taking him to like the fire and as a kid I was like oh my god I have to pray like I can't I can't yeah. like do that to myself you know it was very like I think it was like traumatizing I guess because I was like so young and I was just like oh my god this is what I have to do like I don't want to be like that and it's on TV so like things are on TV you're like oh my god I have to like follow that yeah or it's like broadcasted everywhere so that was what made me like okay I have to be like this so it, it was um it wasn't being Muslim in a way that's like I want to be Muslim because I choose to and I love God and I love this and that it was out of fear it was out of fear so and, religion in general like especially I think well, I, I can't make judgments about, like, the Muslim religion. No, yeah. But a lot of it does seem, like, fear-based. And even if fear you look at, like, what... Um, yeah. Like, how, like, ISIS reestablished, like, the caliphate in different countries and stuff like yeah. that. And that's out of, like... Out of, yeah. If you don't do this, then X bad thing will happen to you. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So how did that... When did you start to realize that, like, you weren't... Like, were, were I feel you... Like We'll go ahead. Yeah, it's like a gra it was like a gradual thing, okay. kind of. So like it just little things just kept coming up in high school that I was like, hmm, like this is weird, like this doesn't make sense. So things just weren't making sense to me at all. Yeah. So everything was confusing, and I was like, the world doesn't make sense. Like I don't understand how Islam like fits into like this world that I'm in, because you're, because we're in this. I'm in this like place where there's all these white people. I'm the only like black person, like only like Muslim in Carp. In Carp, I guess, yeah. and or in at Kate, where we live. Our Kate is like very like a big bubble. So it's like very, like you don't really go out, out much. Like we have the dining hall there. We have like a gym, we have a pool. So you kind of just like stay in this like little bubble. Yeah. Mostly. Um, and so I feel like little things. So I remember I read um, Night by Eli Weasel. I, 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 I know that. Like, book. Yeah. yeah. I've heard so of that So we book. read that yeah. in class and I was like crying, like reading it in my, um, in my room. Like I was yeah. like, I was like, what? Like, why would God let this happen? Just like, for this context, doesn't make sense. can you uh, say like what, what that book is? So it's, it's about? about the Holocaust and okay. um, about one person's experience um, during the Holocaust. And it's very like... And where it was the person Jewish and like... Yeah. Okay. So it was like very detailed about what was happening. And if you're reading it, you're just like, wow. Like at that age, it was very like intense for me. How old were you? Um... 16, okay. 17. So it just made me think like, is there a God? Like, like why would God let this happen? Cause yeah. you know, it just, everything seems like, it's everything seemed like it was, I guess I wasn't aware, I don't know. One of my teachers told me that I like took, like as a, when I was a freshman, that I took information at face value mm -hmm. and that I wouldn't go deeper into things and I would just believe whatever I was told. Yeah. So that's kind of how I was. Okay. And I wouldn't go into things deeper. I would just be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's what happens in life. Or, okay, cool. Like when we're reading books, analyzing things, I'm not like going really deeper. Yeah. And that was why like, and I struggled like in that, in one of her classes because I wouldn't like really analyze things. It was so just, just, that was what it was. That's what it was. And that's yeah. kind of how I was taught, like, as a kid. So that's kind of how I just did things. But then when I read that book and, like, I had that experience with, like, the Day of Silence and, like, all these things, I was like, let me think for myself for yeah. a second. So then I, I like, kind of was like, let me think, like, what do I believe, like, as a person, like, myself, like, not just, you know. 
I what my parents of, believe. Yeah, I, dude, I it's funny. I had a I had a similar experience because I have like, I have different. Um, well, it depends on the subject, but mm -hmm. I have different political views. Yeah. Than my parents, and I remember, uh, like, I remember the day of like, it's not. Like, the day when I realized that I, like, disagreed, disagreed. with them over something. Yeah. And it, was, it didn't even matter that it was politics, but it, it's just c curious how, like, <laughs> you, you're, you like, aligning with your parents for so long, not even politically, like I'm saying, but you share their ideas and things because you, they're, well, they raised you. Yeah, exactly. And so then, you think they're, like... one day, yeah. you, you establish your own viewpoints and stuff like that. Exactly. So that's kind of what happened. I was like, wait, let me be my own human. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I totally get that. And then how did that, uh, so after that day that really your dad was like criticizing you of that and how else did that change you? I finished my frame by the way. <laughs> what are I you like doing? It. Wait, we need an update real quick. Oh, it's just. <laughs> Dude, we got in deep real quick. Yeah, no, wait, check it. I got a frame of nothing. Maybe this will be my Well, my I piece. have to make a frame myself. So I'm just kind of like going off of whatever's now happening. Now I have a lot of pressure. No, you don't. Should this I just is cut out a pretty I don't know picture what I'm even of doing. Anya Taylor-Joy and just put it in the middle? <laughs> That's what art is. That's what art is, art. honestly. Um, but yeah, so that was your your day of like establishing your yeah. what do you say like independent thinking. Yeah. So so it was like as I said like it was like a bunch of different things. So it was that the book and then also like just after all that I was like kind of like listening more or like observing more I guess and like thinking critically. Yeah. Yeah. Like my teacher said, and and I started like realizing how like how much I just didn't agree with my parents and how much I didn't like really understand, I guess, and that I need to like really like dig deep into things and like figure things out for myself. And how did you start doing so, that? So I started like, um, I would go online like all the time. Like I would be in my room like or anywhere like just like researching topics or like watching documentaries or like just like learning things. Using the internet? Yeah, so I would be using the internet all the time and I'd be like, okay, what does like, I, and then I, I like had this book, um, the, of the Quran, and then, because I was like confused, so I was like, I need to like read this, and like, cause wow. it, and it was a translation, okay. so I would read it, and I was like, uh, what? So it was saying some things about women that I was like, hell no. What like, were those things? Do you remember? Um, not particularly, but it was just like, just sexist, in my opinion, from yeah. what I, there were like so, so many things, I can't remember all of it, but like, and then I started listening to my parents or like listen to what they what they're saying and they're like, oh, so I would like I have two other brothers. Mm -hmm. So um, I would I, I, I was like observing how they were treating my brothers and how they were treating me and my sister. And it was very different. Like they would be criticizing me, what my sister and I wore all the time. And they would be criticizing like um, or like making us making the women wash the dishes and cook and then making my brother, you know. Was this your father or your mother mostly? My father you? and sometimes my, my mom, okay. sometimes. So like, it's like kind of like a, a cultural thing too. Yeah. Which is also why it was hard because I was like, I guess it's like how we are in Senegal, like how it works, you know? So maybe like I'm put, pushing like Western ideas into this. So then it's also like, I was like, oh, like what is right, yeah. you know? Like, should I stick with my culture or should I really like understand how like, how messed up this, Gen these gender roles or, or how like my parents are treating me like or how their views of LGBTQ are you know what I mean mm -hmm. um, what was the question again I don't even know dude. <laughs> we're just rolling we're just rolling we're rolling with it um, but well yeah no it was how did you start uh, finding your independent critical thinking yeah okay so yeah it was the internet it the internet like. and like talking to my friends I guess and like really like opening up to them about it um, and I just kind of was trying to figure out like okay do I believe in this religion? One, and then I decided no. <laughs> really? Yeah. Do you remember the the day or the the time that you decided that you were just like this is not who I am? Um, I, I don't remember if it was like a day, but it was like really hard in the beginning because I I didn't want to like pray, you know. And but that was something your family. But that had was done. something I had always done. Okay. And and I when I first didn't do it, like I, I felt guilty. Like I was really guilty. Um, and so it took a while before I wasn't guilty. <laughs> like yeah. now I don't really like care anymore. But like when I wouldn't pray, I, I feel so bad. I'm like, oh no, like Was that's... that guilt or fear? Because you, earlier think, you I talked think it's about, fear. okay. There Cause yeah, is, earlier yeah. you talked about the, um, the establishment of fear. And was that just through, was the establishment of fear that you think that's natural throughout like the Muslim religion or is that your father or? I think it was my father. I, th I think it's just his views that did that, did that for me. Okay. I don't think it's the whole religion. Okay. I think it's that, but also even like when I was 
figuring things out for myself, I just realized I didn't agree with it in general, just because it just didn't align with what I believed, like what I was starting to believe or like starting to like think about. Yeah. Finally, like realizing things for myself. So I was like, I believe that women should be equal to men. <laughs> that was one. And I was like, I think I, I think that that should I be that's, something. Yeah, that's fair. So that was fair. So I was like, <laughs> I think that's that's right, reasonable. Yeah. So and and I, and I didn't see that being a thing, or like I I didn't see the equality, you know, within that I wanted your own within my own household. So okay. now I was like, hmm. And then I I remember I would look up, um, like there was like these videos about like ex-Muslims. And so I, I'd be like watching them and like listening to like what they have to say, like from like not just me and my family, like type of Muslim, but like um, other types, like from um, from like Afghanistan or from like the Middle East or whatever. And what, and what were they saying? They were kind of saying the same thing. So then I was like, hmm, there's a pattern here. Did you uh, read Malala? Malala, Malala came to my school. Really? Yeah. Wow. She was amazing. Do you want to explain? Because some people listening to this might not know who she is. Um, uh, Malala, Malala Yousaf, right? Just, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't really know too much about Malala. Um, I just know that she is fighting for women's rights all over. And she fights for um, education for women, uh, which is also something that I am always for. She's um, a Muslim. She's a Muslim, too. And yeah. she's like, how but, old is she? Like 17, 18, probably 20 I don't know. Now. I don't know now. And I was probably like a little bit older. How old was she when she came to your school? Uh, I think she was like 18, maybe. Okay. I have no idea. It was, when was it? It was like, I was in high school like two years ago, three years ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Oh, wait, remember like your exactly. high school, high she, school came. she came. Really? Yeah. And what, do you remember what she talked about? Um, I feel like I wasn't like really, not like that I wasn't paying attention, but that, um, I don't really remember too much. Okay. I just remember like it was like this big deal. She like just she she kind of just like gave a little talk, and then we asked questions. Okay, cool. So it was kind of like a whole like just asking questions, meeting Malala basically. <laughs> like yeah. everyone was like starstruck basically. She um so for also for people listening, she basically spoke out um, for women's rights in I don't know if it was Afghanistan or Pakistan. Yeah. Or one of them. But basically, the Taliban shot her in the head, and she survived, and um, then she became pretty well known. Uh, there was a book about her, and then she's been on the da like David Letterman show, which is how I know her, mm -hmm. um, and she has a pretty like incredible story. So yeah, but, but that's 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 cool that she came to your school. Yeah, she did, but I don't I don't remember like researching much about Malala. I remember just researching like people who were in like in the deep in the depths, in the depths. of in the depths of like of the Muslim Islamic countries. religion or Muslim okay. countries. So that's kind of where I was looking at just like the ideologies and like how women were treated yeah and they were kind of saying the same things and then i don't know why i like forgot this point but i had a friend she was from afghanistan and she wore the hijab she was muslim yeah she's still my friend right now and my dad Does would be like still live there um i don't know if she's back there but she goes to school in like the, on the east coast right now really yeah how did you know how she got out um she was part of this like program that set her up um, for like to like teach her English and like other things, but they also partnered up with my school and okay. she was accepted and like started going there. And the school is kind of very um, it's 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 not very diverse, but it's like, more diverse than most places, especially for carpentry, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so she came, and at first I remember like one day I was in her room and we were talking. And then she was telling me how when she first met me, she was she hated me. Really? <laughs> yeah, because Why? because she 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 thought because she, cause she knows my dad is Muslim and he was like talking to her and being like, oh my god, you're amazing, like you're wearing the hijab, like you're this, you're that, like you're amazing all the time. Yeah. And and she was like, yeah, I didn't like you because like you were your what's it called? You're Mr. Pui's daughter. Okay. And and I thought you were like very Muslim and that you were gonna criticize me or something. And I was like, oh. Criticize her for. Just like just her in general or yeah. whatever. And then I was like, well, I hated you because I thought that you were very Muslim and my dad liked you more than me and all this stuff about like whatever. But we were talking, and she was like, and we like came into this like conclusion that we both were on the same page about the religion and how we just thought that it didn't align with some beliefs that we both had even for her like i was like this was shocking to me because I, I thought she was very like muslim she wore the hijab she was like everyone was like oh there's farida like the muslim girl or like there's well she's like really cool or whatever yeah yeah um and she just came from afghanistan like blah blah all this stuff 
but then when I, but then we were talking and I real and we both realized that we both like had the same thoughts about women in the religion, even for her um, coming from Afghanistan. So we kind of bonded over that, over like not the trauma, but just like how yeah, we were the like thought the process. thoughts and yeah, like yeah. our ideas. And so we were both like, wait, what? That's so weird that you hated me because you thought I was really Muslim and I hated you because I thought you're really Muslim and that we couldn't be friends or all yeah. this stuff. Um, because I don't even know how that, it's just very weird to me that that was happening. Um, so wait, why did she still wear the hijab and stuff even so though she didn't, she like critiqued Because I, th I think because she just felt like she had to, um, but now she doesn't. She like, doesn't wear She the, doesn't wear it. And is that like her form of retaliate, not retaliation, yeah, so but I guess like protest? She was, yeah, she, she was a, she's very rebellious, I guess, more rebellious than, than I am. And so she was like, there was- Even so, now? Yeah, okay. I guess, but um, in high school, I, I was a little bit more like cautious, just also because my dad was there and I didn't want to like mess anything up, but he was, but she was like, we were in the dining hall one day and she was like, Jara, eat this bacon. And I was like, uh, because oh. I, I, I had never eaten bacon before or yeah. pork because that's part pork of the religion. Is, yeah. We don't eat bacon. And I was like, no, I was like, I was like, Frida, like I draw the line there. Like, like she's like, no, you have to do it. Like just to like rebel. Has she done it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Just, just, just to rebel. Dude. Like not because you want to eat it, just yeah. to rebel. And I was like, oh my God, Dude, you're crazy. If, if you're going to eat any pork, it should be bacon. Cause so bacon then, is super good. <laughs> so then I was like, no, the first time. And then later I, I don't know why I, I was feeling really rebellious. So then I was like, I'm going to do it. And it, it took me a while. I was like, oh God, so then I took a bite of it and it was bacon. really good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was good. But I was like, oh God, like I'm eating this. Dude, bacon's fire. So, I used so to yeah. eat four slices of bacon every morning. Oh my God. And six yeah. eggs. And then I'm like, I should change my diet. Well, now I'm vegetarian. Really? Recently, yeah. Okay. Um, but that's a whole, we can get into that. You can that get into that later. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, you have so much to talk about. Yeah, I, I don't know. even know where to go. I don't know where to go. There's so many things to talk about. It's crazy. We killed um, it so far, though. But okay, with Frida, like, we were still friends, and yeah. that's kind of how we bonded. And we both were like, oh, like, it was a breath of fresh air because, like, finally someone shared my experience besides, like, my sister finally someone like outside of my household like shared my experience and like what I was thinking like just like what I was like what my thoughts were about it yeah um and even like there was this other kid he was also Muslim and this is what he said to me um his name was Raja and he um he was telling me how he felt scared like being at the school because my dad would always be like hey did you pray hey did you do this hey did you wow. do this hey come to this event or whatever yeah and he was like Jara, like your dad's always like this, this, and that, and I and I left my family like in I forgot where he's from, like India somewhere maybe I I forget where exactly to come to America to come to the school. Okay. And he was like, I left my family because I didn't want them to like do that same exact thing that your dad's doing to me. And, and then I was he like, comes all this way. Yeah, and, and he comes and he's, he's still experiencing yeah. that. And I was like, I'm so sorry. Like I I deal with it too, so I know that feeling. So it's kind of like finding these people who are who I thought were, you know, very like Muslim but weren't, but this is just our experience. Like it's not like every other, um, every other like r person in the religion like thinks this way or like has th those thoughts. Some people it's very like spiritual to them, but for us, I guess it was very like just given to us and we didn't really like choose it. So well, because I, you're born into because it. you're born into yeah. it. So that's kind of how we were experiencing it. Um, so what, I um, know. I, I don't know if this is off what topic or not. Go no. ahead. Uh, I'm just curious about, so like, I was born, so I'm from Steamboat Springs, Colorado, like the yeah. mo and like there's not a lot of um, like diversity there as mm -hmm. far as like like religion and racial and even like queer and people like that. Yeah. Um, but I think I I'm just curious about your like so you're from Senegal and what was your interpretations of like Americans and like Americanism and American life as someone looking from outside? Because th it varies per country. Like I, I know people from Canada who have different yeah. uh, like views of America and especially like the politics. Yeah. Um, so like what, what did you see America as and how did you feel when you were gonna like, so, when you were yeah. gonna move When we were gonna move, we, I was really excited because it was like, oh, this is the dream. This is what everyone wants. Like you're, you guys are very, very lucky. Like all four of my, or all four of us, my siblings. And, and why did everyone want because America has more opportunities. One, we can go to better schools. We can have better life and give back to and our community. And you knew that when you were eight. And we knew that, yeah. Okay, got it. Um, Did you wear a hijab when you? No. Okay. So in in Senegal, like it it like differs. Like you can wear it or not wear it. It's 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 very different from um, the Middle East. Okay. So it's a it's slightly more free. 
a slightly more. Okay. Like way, or like you can, my, my mom sometimes doesn't wear it or like, you know, it's kind of like your choice in a way. Does she still wear it now? Um, when she's like praying or if okay. she like wants to wear it, you know what I mean? Yeah, like she'll yeah. cover her head. Um, but it's not like fully forced upon, but in some countries they are, but just not in Senegal. Um, but I, <clears throat> I remember my thought of the United States, so I didn't really have many thoughts about it. I was just kind of like, I'm really excited to go because I'm excited to walk on stairs, yeah. go, go in an elevator, or like, I didn't even know an elevator existed, but when I went in, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Yeah. And when I came, I would be like walking on the stairs, like up and down, because I thought it was so fun, because I didn't have stairs. Really? <laughs> yeah, and then- Wait, why didn't you have stairs? I don't know, I guess we just, I, I guess our house just didn't have stairs, or I just thought that was the coolest thing, or like this, these little, like, we, you know what I mean? Yeah, just these little These little, little things that were like really cool for me. Um, Real quick, update the, the collage. You gotta show. I, mine's still the same, yeah. I'm still thinking. It takes me a while for, I just oh, I love that art. that art. art. I like. Yes. Yes. I love it. Yes. Slowly but surely, as, We're they, getting as there. they say, yeah. So yeah, and how wealthy like was your family? Like, cause if like a lot of, I mean, like for example, like Americans think of like most Af like of Africa as like definitely like more towards poverty. Yeah. Just because that's like the media and kind of yeah. like what you see growing up. Yeah. So like how much of that is like, what would you say is like realistic versus like what reality is? Um, I don't want to speak for all of like that's Africa, true. Yeah. but um, for me, we we are like uh, not middle class maybe like a little less but the thing is we always had something to eat we were never like starving and like with my siblings like yeah. our generation i guess not my my, my dad because i remember my dad he was very like not well off at all like he he would tell us like stories like he's like yeah we've we lived in like a hut first and then we like like his story is like crazy i feel like you would have to do a podcast for him because yeah. he has a lot to say um but he like he lived in a hut first and like made of mud or something like he, he, he like he's like very dramatic so he about came it from nothing. So f from nothing basically um and he had to learn like the reason why like the muslim religion is so important to him because it like it's something that helped him through all those hard times mm -hmm. and something that made him work harder and he was like top of his class he he was like really good at school because he wanted to get out yeah yeah and he was like he was he always talks about how he's like always focusing on um school and like he's like yeah my friends would be you know you know playing soccer or like you know having parties and I would be like no I'm gonna go study you know what I mean so he's very like strict in that way he like wants us to like study and, and like get that education do you think the um like his his critiques of you and your your views come from his desire to like he like want what's best for you according yeah. to what, what he, he believes he yeah believes? exactly okay. that's literally what it is yeah exactly um so because he used what he what he believes to be able to, to, get, be able to get so that's what he thinks okay. he's like he's like you know this is what got me here like god got me here in this way and so this is what i want to teach my kids mm -hmm. to be able to help them you know what i mean so it's yeah. like it comes from a place of good intentions but it doesn't fully like pan out that way as you've seen yeah um what were we talking about <laughs> we, were, uh, we were talking about no you're good uh, I'm like forgetting no yeah um no, we were talking about your view of america oh yeah there we go yeah yeah okay and then one of the other things i was looking at i was like i'm excited to go to america so i can have one of the white white girls teach me how to blow a bubble like for when like you a bubble, bubble gum, gum. Bubble? yeah yeah that was that was one of my goals so it's very like very i was very young it's so, like very childish i didn't really yeah. think about uh, other things and that was what it was um, and what were your, so then were your expectations like, cause I, I'm always curious about this because a lot of America does have issues like yeah, poverty and whatnot. And um, I'm just curious of other places, um, viewpoints of America and like how, if they even think that there is poverty mm -hmm. or like, like what image c could you describe of like how you saw America like in your head versus like when you came here. And I, and I, and I, yeah. I think it's still, I mean, America's one of the, like, personally, I think it's one of the best countries on its on the earth because, I mean, it has its problems, but as mm. far as, like, having the freedom to be able to, like, express yourself, I mean, you might get, like, there's, like I said, yeah. there's definitely issues. But, yeah. Um, I mean, even from, like, where you're from or, like, the other, uh, well, I guess Senegal's not an Arab country, but, like, uh, countries that yeah. have, like, Muslim-based mm -hmm. uh, 
laws and stuff like that where you can yeah. get killed for exactly like for there was a um there was an iranian boxer or some fighter mm -hmm. that was from yeah he was from iran and he went back and then he got sentenced to death because he was like protesting something in america or something like that mm, um yeah so at least like in america you can do those things but yeah. anyway uh so yeah what were what were your viewpoints of america in like the how wealthy we were and whatnot. Um, so I feel like everyone thought, or like everyone thinks that America is like the place where you go mm -hmm. to succeed. So it's like the American dream that everyone like thinks about, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you're going here, you're gonna get an education, then you're gonna get a really good job, you're gonna make a lot of money, and you're gonna be able to help everyone back home. Yeah, I think that's kind of it, because I didn't really know much, but when I came, I feel like growing up in CARP and at the boarding school, like I'm basically like growing up as an American, you know? Like you feel more American yeah. than? Yeah, because I was, I remember like, I would think about like, hmm, if I went to Senegal right now, I would not know how to survive. Cause, yeah. And they, and when we went back once, like my sophomore year, people would like um, comment on our language, like, cause we like speak Wolof, okay. which is the, one of the main languages too. Um, and they'd be like, oh, you're not from here, are you? Or like, you're speaking a little bit off, you know? Like, like we're speaking it, but we're not speaking it in the off. way. Yeah. Like how in French, how I was trying to speak French, <laughs> yeah. it was off, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of like that. Okay. Um, and how did that make you feel, like like you, the people that you grew up, like, I mean, because you were born there. Do you have an American passport? I, I do now, I just okay. became a citizen, actually. Really? Yeah, recently. Oh, wow, cool. So. Congratulations, thank I guess. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, how did that feel, like, going back and how much do you say that you identify with like where you're from versus like who you became here um that's a deep question yeah but. no because i'm always like if i was there and i stayed there i would be a completely different person in it's what in, ways just i wouldn't have had the education and the sorry for the airplane no it's all okay <laughs> i wouldn't have had like the education and the push to like learn more about the world yeah. or have mostly the resources to learn more about the world. Um, and I would, and I remember when I was a kid, I was like, oh, I'm gonna grow up. I didn't even think growing up and being like a doctor or something. I was like, I'm gonna grow up, I'm gonna be a mom. Like I'm gonna have kids and a husband. That's like what I was thinking, yeah. you know? So that, that was like, I feel like if I kept growing up in that way, maybe that like I would be so different. And I probably wouldn't have even like thought about being gay or anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. That would not even be in my, I'd be like, nope, that's a sin. Like, I can't, nope, you know what I mean? When did you um, start, like, having, like, knowledge of that, like, maybe a part of who you are? Um, and, like, it was, like, seventh grade. Okay, so I, pretty early. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had, like, butterflies for one of my friends, and I was like, I was like, what is this? Yeah. And I never had butterflies before, and I was like, what? And I was like, no. And then I was like, no, that, that's not real. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, nope. And then so I never, and then I never thought about now. it again until I came to high school. And yeah. in my boarding school, it's very like liberal. Everyone's like coming out on stage, like most, like not every week, but like every like every other season, like someone goes on stage and they're like, "Hi everyone, I want to come out as whatever." And then I, I really, like, and then it, it's like inspiring. Yeah. So that's kind of how I how I was inspired. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like everyone's like there are some people who are like you know different, or it's people yeah. who, you know what I mean. Um, and so that I think that is what inspired me like seeing people on the stage and there was like one day when I saw like a bunch of people like on the stage like it was like a lot of people and they were like I'm coming out as this and this and they had like their shirts and I was like hmm so it was like I opening my that. mind up more yeah and it was like I can be I can like let me l let me think about this more and and stop like pushing back and did like, you denying. always know kind of so like I didn't really like know no I was kind of like debating I was like am I am I not you know yeah that was the, the debate so it wasn't like I knew like right away and then because I wasn't like what was I? I I wasn't like having crushes on like people on the screen I don't think like I'd be like oh I love Shawn Mendes or like or like big or like um not big time rush I was just watching that show actually because it just came on Netflix. yeah but like um just like being that regular like teen girl who's like oh I'm obsessed with this band or this like this hot like teen dude, or whatever yeah. you know J Justin um, Bieber. yeah and um, I think also like I don't know I think I just was inspired by those people and then I was like let me open my mind up because I remember like in seventh grade that's what happened and so I was like I can't 
push that away. So let me just think about this more. So I kind of was like, hmm. Because it wasn't really pressing for me to think about it at all. It wasn't like in my face because I, because I'm, I'm pansexual. So I'm like into boys and girls. So I was like, oh, I'm into boys. Like, so I probably am not into girls. So I, I just didn't think about that. And then yeah. I was like, maybe I'm, I'm into boys more than girls. And that's just how it is. And that's fine. You know what I mean? So then it was kind of like a gradual, like a uh, little by little, like, oh, it's okay. Kind of like that. Yeah. Um, so. And did you ever like come out formally? No, okay. I like, I've never come out to anyone. I, all I do is just say, oh yeah, I saw this cute like girl over there and I was like, can I get your number or something? I don't know, I'll, I'll just like mention yeah, it. Yeah. Or um, um, I, so I, I never come out to anyone, but my friends like knew, I guess, or like I would be like, maybe I told them, but it never felt like I was like coming out like, hey everyone, sit down. So it yeah. wasn't like that, okay. I don't think. It was like, I think more like, gradual and like you know chill because no one really cared mm -hmm. the school like no one give like no one cared no at one all shit, you know yeah. what i mean they're like okay like you know because well, like you said Cause it's very that. liberal so it's not yeah. like there's anyone like really like shutting you down yeah so it wasn't like a big deal so i, I didn't make it that big of a deal for myself it's except, crazy my um yeah. sorry actually no, no. i interrupted you no, no go my school there were like we had lgbtq plus um like a club. Yeah. I think it was a club like too. Alliance. Yeah. yeah. And there was like one like hick kid and he he ripped down the flag. Yeah. Oh. So like and, yeah. and there's not a lot of wow. um not a lot of queer people, at mm -hmm. least like that I know of. Mm -hmm. Uh that are from where I'm from. Yeah. Uh there was this one one I think he was gay. I don't really know. But um he was like the only gay kid in Steamboat. And mm. that was like a pretty like Wow. I don't know about if it was a big deal, but it was like, oh, like, that's crazy. Yeah, um, wow. Versus, like, your high school, where it was, like, every week people are coming out. It was, like, every week, but, like, yeah, like, yeah. so. Like, like pretty frequently. Pretty frequently, yeah. yeah. That's pretty crazy. Um, but, like, it's just, like, yeah, that's so crazy, like, how, because now I'm, like, realizing, like, how different my school is, because I'm, I'm, I'm always, like, oh, it's very normal, like, it's chill, yeah. but it's such a different, like, experience than mo what most people have, mm -hmm. um, which I guess I was lucky in that way, just because I got that acceptance and that love for my friends and from like it's everyone around no one no one really cared so it, it wasn't like i was being harassed by like america and like american society which i know a lot of places people they are, are people are yeah um so as far as your family's perception of you in that manner you have not come out to them obviously no yeah because there would be a lot of backlash because i remember when i did the day of silence it was like a it, that was a big deal like that was crazy because they cause my dad called my family in senegal and then I had to sit in a in like a video call and while they were just like ripping me apart, being like, Jara, like, what are you doing? Like, this is an inappropriate behavior. Because you're gonna go to hell or something. You're, yeah, all, yeah. It, was like, it was like a a speech that they were giving me to like be better or like whatever. Um. So yeah. That's kind of crazy how it's it's on, it's honestly like pretty ironic. Yeah, it that is. That you're pansexual and that like. But it's also funny because my sister is like bi. Really? Too. So then we're okay. both like in our room, like, why did God do this to us? Like, <laughs> like why, are you, why are you trying to give us a hard time? Like, for what? Yeah. You know? Um, and what is her, what are her, do you, do you both have, like, share similar yeah, thoughts? Yeah, we share the same exact thoughts. Okay, cool. Exactly. And do you think that when, if you ever come out to your parents, it will be like you two together? Um, we both are like, we don't have to come out to our parents, <laughs> you, you know? don't think you ever will? Like, like, unless we're like getting married to someone. Um, but like, we don't want to be like, hey, sit down, because they'll have to figure it out, you know? Because yeah. we just feel like that they're not going to really give us the the bare minimum or even like want to look us in the eye or anything. Um, That's crazy. So we just know that it's not going to be a good experience. So yeah. we're like, why do we have to put ourselves through that? Yeah, I'm sorry right that now. that has to be that way. It's just yeah, like, but it's our yeah. it's our struggle. It's our our journey. Wow. So we gotta deal with that. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. I, I think uh, I think a lot of people are fortunate enough that their parents like yeah. are like that. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, that's that's insane. And so yeah, I, I guess like living in my house and like facing all these like expectations and like restrictions and judgment judgments like made me want to like learn more about like social justice and like LGBTQ and women and everything you know what i mean yeah and and god and like figuring out what my spirituality is which is still like up for debate because i'm still like on my journey you know figuring things out but yeah. um 
Well, we all yeah. are too, because we're think all we're, we're all very young. young. We're so yeah. young. So I always think that I'm like, I'm young. I can just chill. <laughs> so no need to go crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Dang. I know. I was like, how deep, how, how deep do you want to go? <laughs> That's what I asked. I was like, you don't really know me. So I now like you're it. learning no, everything yeah. about me. Thank you for being so open. It's very, no, very yeah. nice. I don't know. I'm always like open and like try to like, if I meet someone for the first time and I like, I'm chill with them, I'll like tell them everything. And they're like, and yeah. I'm like, <laughs> so are we, are we chill then? No, yeah, we're chill, we're no. chill. <laughs> Heck yeah, we're chill. <laughs> we're chill. I did it. We're chill. <laughs> so, um, so how do you take what your, like all of your, I don't know, I don't even know. What, what, what was it? It was your sexuality, your history, your religion, your like, like you have like all the things on I, your okay, plate. Okay, everything on my plate. There okay, we go. There yeah. we go. <laughs> I don't know how to put it into <laughs> how words. How do you take all of those things on your plate and then how do you express like express yourself so you model you do art you do like um collage stuff and all yeah. and all add in the um the pigeon what's it called pigeon pigeon head? dreams pigeon, pigeon dreams head. Pigeon I, like, head. <laughs> I should change it pigeon head to pigeon head uh but so yeah when did you start like using that i assume because a lot of people what they do they use art to like well it's a self-expression thing. yeah uh and when did that kind of begin for you and do you remember like the first time you made a collage or like took a photo or like oh, yeah, I do like doing or, photography and yeah. film. So I, I wanted to be a film major. Oh my God, there's so many things. Okay, so I I moved from my, for... <laughs> Dialed. That looks so good. Thanks, I know. I'm I need kidding. to add some more words. <laughs> no, 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 add your, no, wait, look, check it. So then, I don't even know if you know, but my name, my podcast is Worlds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dialed. Wait, you need to update. We need to give an oh. update. It's just... I guess we have we this have, camera we too. We have different, look. different like things, but I like. Dude, this. we got different styles going on. I'm all about, dude. I love words. Yeah. Dude, that was gonna be the name of my podcast. Giving power to words. I put that here. Oh yeah. There I, you I go. like that. It was gonna be words or worlds. Mmm. But I like, I like worlds because it's based on the people. It's based on like the worlds. Of, yeah. Like, the people. Um, versus just like <clears throat> words is just I don't even know. Anyway. Uh, anyway. So yeah, when did you start to, like. You know what I mean? What, the question yeah. I just asked, okay. yeah. Um, when did I start? So the thing is, um, I guess like it's, I don't know if it's ironic or, cause, cause like the day of silence, like you're being silenced and I was being silenced. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're being silenced. And I guess I'm always being silenced in my household cause in our culture, you don't really talk back to your parents. So, so, so most of the time I'm just like taking in whatever they're saying to me as a speech. And then mm -hmm. that's kind of the conversation. Yeah. I never say anything back. So I'm kind of like, just blocked speaking or like expressing myself so I guess like I use my art and like I try to get away as much as possible to like be anywhere else besides my house so I can express myself in the way that the I way feel that you want to be yourself and yeah, yeah and so like this I don't know what is going on with my with my dad like he's a whole different breed so it's not like everyone's every single Muslim person's like family is like this but he's different so he recently he's been like really like more strict so he's like he'll like judge like the shoes i'm wearing or like the clothes i'm wearing or be like oh you need to change or you need to do yeah. whatever and my sister like yesterday came into my room she was so mad she was like oh she was wearing like a long sleeve like like shirt yeah and she was like oh dad just told me to change like i'm so mad like like what like i can't believe this like like what's wrong with this outfit like it's just always like a that that's always like annoying because my sister she wants to like, express herself yeah. through her clothes and she is loves, that like her like yeah, fashion? Yeah, she is loves more fashion her, okay. and she loves like, she, she, I, I bought her a sewing machine. She wants to like sew. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Heck yeah. And so for me, like, um, I want to express myself through like art, through like my collages, through like film, um, photography, and like even like modeling. Like, I, I, I'm not part of like an agency or anything. Once I just, again, a lot on your I plate. I just kind of model a little bit. Yeah. But like when I'm modeling, I, I don't, my parents don't know. My dad doesn't know. My, they don't know. They haven't seen any of my that's pictures crazy. because. Because I know, like, when they see, they're like, "Oh, you're in a bikini. Like, I'm sending you back to, to, to like Senegal, or like, Are I can't they have this." that for you before? Oh yeah, that's like the big threat. Like, I'm gonna send you back. So what did they? So right after I got my citizenship, I was like, <sighs> like I was like so, like calm and like so happy because I was like, now they can't threaten that because I'm a citizen. Like, I'm here. Like, when was they that? Can't leave it. They just do that all the time. So it's like a no way. When did like, you get my, your oh, citizenship? February eighth of this year. Oh wow! So you're, so you're a new. I'm new. So wow. I was the last one. So everyone in my family got their citizenship, and I was the last one. So I was so scared. I like studied so hard for like the test, but it was so easy, and the person was so nice, which was really nice because um, it should be easy for people who don't speak English too well. Yeah. 
And so it was really good. It's um, funny because I bet you know more about <clears throat> like, because I, I, I watched a documentary that a Chapman student made mm -hmm. about uh, like that process. Yeah, like knowing more about the history than most America Americans. America than most Americans. Yeah, so That's we have to learn crazy. all the history. So it was, I, I had like Quizlet and I was like, okay, like, <laughs> Like Roosevelt, this or like yeah. I'd be like, okay, like the president, like it was a lot, but that's um, crazy. That's the process. So, you, what did you start with? Um, so I started with photography in seventh grade. Okay. We had this thing called the QED, the quote, wait, quote, air demonstratum. I can't even say that. Oh my god, no, I'm, don't even ask me. Quote, what? I can't. I can't. <laughs> it's like it's like this really long word. It's I like can't even. you just like Camila did. Um, Camila did music Love for her, me. so she like sang and like yeah. wrote her own songs, and I did photography. I like um, had a mentor who was teaching me how to take pictures, and then I would go out and take pictures of myself for myself. So that was when I first like wanted like loved art in that way. But also, I did like I would sing on stage um, and act and like do the musicals and stuff so, so like that. So that was really amazing for me to like express myself in that way. But at that age, like in middle school, like. I was kind of just like living my life like I didn't really have m much to worry about mm -hmm. but then when I high school hit that that's when everything was like wait this is a world that as we were talking about yeah um and then in high school like I would do musicals and I would be I would do photography and film and I was like I was in advanced photography and film too like I just I just did the whole thing um and that was like how I wanted to express myself a lot um, photography and film just like I don't know why art just like soothes me <laughs> like yeah. I don't know what it is like it just makes me there's a quote happy oh there's a quote art there we go. soothes me yeah so there I like that. so just any type of art like going out and singing or going out and acting I love acting and um, going out and taking pictures and then editing them make like making a type of world that I want to make and then a type of worlds the type of worlds I want to make <laughs> so yeah for my um for my collages like I'm building these worlds that are kind of that are just obscure that really don't make sense and just have like women as the subject mm -hmm. um, of this world that I made yeah you know and it's like a dream state or like just something that's just like surreal um, and so I kind of like find um, solitude and, or, or whatever or <laughs> I don't know um, it's funny I get like a vibe like imagine if you made a film that was like collage based so it was like um, <clears throat> like an animated thing where you do like stop motion, mm. but it's like moving collages and stuff oh, like yeah. that. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, but so it started and then when did you find like the collaging? Um, it, I think this one was like this summer. Okay. It wasn't really the summer. It was just like I had made the collages before and I posted them, but I hadn't made more. I just was like, whatever. And then I started, my friend was like, Jar, you have to post more, or, like make more. Like, Cause it, I mean, I'll show it on the, on the thing. It, you have like crazy cool collages. I've like you. looked at them and Thank it's super, you. super unique. Um, so I like that. So, so I was like, okay. So I, I made um, a, an Instagram and I started posting and people kept following and it was really nice to have that. And people were like, oh, I want to buy this. Oh, this is really cool. Oh, I love this. Where can I get this? Yeah. And so, um, it was really fun and I Do you want to plug your do you sell prints right now? Um I'm making a website art? actually okay. cuz I I was selling it on I don't know if this is bad to say Redbubble it's like a you can website say it. okay. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm not sponsored. Dude, yeah, no I'm not I'm not to the point. <laughs> okay, I, yeah. Whenever I was talking about the sponsor stuff I'm just kind of joking Yeah, okay, good. Like I said I, I don't really have anything yet. I yeah. want to sell Dude, you know what I want to do though is like eventually like it would be cool. I don't know if it gets to this point where like instead of like do like merch, but it's from like things I like make like on the podcast oh, yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, that'd be dope. I think that'd be sick. I, um, like, this. I like yours too. I don't know what I'm doing. I, like I how, never know what I'm doing. I just no, kind of just cool, go though. off. Or I like whatever. how, um, yeah, I like how <laughs> different ours are. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Our minds are going different directions. Different directions. Directions. But, uh, and then when do you start modeling? Okay. So I was my, f so. My friend from high school texted me and was like, hey, I have a job, like, um, opportunity, like, if you want to work at this retail store I'm working at. And I was like, okay. So I went and got an interview, and then I got Which the job. What? It's called Studio C. Okay. Um, I'm not sponsored. <laughs> but no one's sponsored here. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Studio C, and um, I worked there for, like, a couple months. Um, and then as I was working there, we had, like, all these different brands, and they would come over and, like, drop their stuff off. Yeah. And this one brand came, and they took a picture of me wearing their stuff, and they were, like, um, they, 
the person got my number just because I work there and maybe they needed to text me or something. But then I got um, a call from them and he was like, I was talking to my team and they really like your look, so I want to bring you up to LA to do a, a shoot for us for our next whatever. And I was like, oh, what, me, really? Like, that picture? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, then, and then I went all the way to um, LA and we shot, it was really fun. Like, I was just, like running around like, it was, it's this very like um, hippie dippy like brand, which is really cool. Um, and that's kind of the first one I did um, officially. And then after that- Did you get paid? No, yeah. Because I didn't know that I that I could get paid. Dude, knowing your he just, worth, he just is gave like... me like um, clothes that that he like made. Okay. So yeah. I, I was like, okay, but I didn't know. And then my friend, the one who like got me the job at the store, was like, Jar, like you should be getting paid. Like like I'm like if you need a manager, like I can help you out. Yeah. Like and yeah. I was like, oh thank you. So that's when I was like, oh I need to actually get paid. And then um, while I'm in the store, um, other brands are like, oh can you model for me? Or like they just kept asking me. Um, and so I started modeling like little by little and then I had like and getting paid getting paid finally there you go um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so then um, it just it was really fun, but I wasn't like oh, I, oh, I, I like want to model it just like kind of happened which is really fun um, and then Also like working at my store um, I got another job at another store. So it was just like this whole thing just happened where I just Got one job for at a store, and I was working at Lucky Llama yeah. Coffee. Yeah. Shout and then, out to Lucky like, Llama. Love that place. Incredible. <laughs> Where I was working, I was working at Lucky Llama, and then I got this other job um, at another retail store. Retail store, so I had three jobs. Wow. Oh my God. And then I was like, oh, I have to choose. So then I like kind of left Lucky Llama for a little bit, and was like, I'll come back soon. But then I kind of got stuck. Sidetracked. Yeah, yeah. And I was kind of stuck in this like the retail business, and I was just there for a while, and then I got. Cheryl Lowe, Rob Lowe's wife, okay. came into my store once wow. and she was like, hmm, I like you, like, I like you. <laughs> let's chat. <laughs> let's collab. And then she's like, here, here's my number, like, I, I want you to work at my um, pop-up store. Wow. So then I worked for a pop-up store for a little bit, that was really fun. And then I, I met Rob Lowe there, he's really, he's just very chill. Yeah. Um, and then I'm, it was very weird, because I was like, okay, I was at Lucky Llama, like, sweeping and, like, <laughs> mopping and, like, serving people. And then now I'm here, like, wearing this... $800 dress like for Rob Lowe. Um, Rob where Rob Lowe's over there talking to Ellen and I'm ringing up <laughs> I, I was ringing up Portia with Ellen's card and I was like how did I get here You're from doing Senegal? A what? I was ringing up like Portia for like a, a like couple thousand dollar like ring or wow. something with Ellen's card and I was like Ellen DeGeneres like I was writing like down her name and like everything and like her you card number it, yeah. and then I was like how does one girl from Senegal West Africa like get here in this like really wealthy like place. I'm not wealthy at all. Yeah. <laughs> like how did I get here? So it was very like weird where like, I I'm always like thinking about that. Like how did I get here? So that's what happened. And then I got a couple more modeling jobs. I haven't gotten any more cause I, I haven't really like done anything. Yeah. But um, I was told to like make a portfolio and like get an agent or something. Yes. But I don't know like, I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like I'm just kind of like going with the flow. You should talk to Sasha. This is what I've done. You know, oh, Sasha, Sasha, Sasha Fox. Sasha, yeah. yeah. I had her on the podcast also. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. She does that. Yeah. And uh, she's, she models and she's pretty successful. So she's you should, so good. You should talk to her. Oh. Um, but yeah, that's cool. So yeah, so. What do you want to do? That's the thing. <laughs> so you I, have so I, much. I wanted to do film. I wanted to pro like, be a producer. Mm -hmm. But that like takes a while. So you have to like build yourself Dude, up. You know, I know what I mean? I, I was like, because I was one of the... Uh, one of the people who came here, because I'm in film school here. Mm -hmm, yeah. And I mean, I consider, even now I'd consider doing like Hollywood filmmaking, but I realized how much like work. I mean like, and you have to, anything you want to do, like even this, like if I want to do this ever, yeah. like seriously, it takes a shit ton of work to get there. But like, as far as within Hollywood, it's just, it's pretty brutal and you have to really, really want it. Yeah. And it's funny, in my free time I found I'm like, I'm not watching like films made by Martin Scorsese. I'm like watching YouTube videos. So I'm like, well, if I'm doing that over watching, watching like, feature films, yeah. I probably like shouldn't <laughs> belong more yeah. on, in this space. space. Yeah. So, um, six. Sorry, I just got distracted. <laughs> no, it's all good. Um, so yeah, uh, I wanted to be a producer, but I was kind of like, I don't know if I, that's what I want to do, especially I was in Montecito, like that's where I work, I guess. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was like having all these like amazing opportunities, like getting modeling, like, and working for like Cheryl Lowe and um, having all the opportunities and working 
Um, I was like, hmm, I have all these connections. I, for some reason, people like me in some way. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and then people... I like you. You're cool. So I, think I understand why people <laughs> I like, like you. you. That's You're nice. very interesting. Thank you. Um, and I was like... You're a cool background, too. <laughs> a unique one, if that, too. Wow. Um, and I was like, hmm... I'm seeing all these people like with all these jobs and I'm like, what job do I want? Like, what do I want to do with my life? Cause like the world's my oyster now. Like I can like just roam free and just think about like what I want, you know? Yeah. Cause I wanted to like, just like kind of like please my parents and like get like a good paying job that like will help us. What did they want us. you to do? So I was like- Like doctor, lawyer, kind of. So that's the thing. Like I, I thought that, that that's what they wanted, but my, but they were, they were very chill with me being like, a, like working in film, which really? I was like, Hmm. I was like, you guys are surprising. Like, they're always like, I can never tell what they're gonna say or or do. They're yeah. always unpredictable. So I was like, oh no, what if they're gonna be like, you can't do this? But they were very th supportive of like me doing film and of me like, um, I don't know, wanting to do whatever as long as I, you know, can get paid or whatever. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that's good. Right now. You have that going for yeah, you. Yeah, so I was, okay, <laughs> I was, <laughs> at least, no, I was, um, I was a film major at City College, um, and I was going to transfer to continue doing that, mm -hmm. but then I was kind of like, this is, I don't really want to do this, like, this is just, like, stressing me out, like, I don't think I'm, I'm cut out for, like, being a cinematographer or, like, all these things that, you know, you do, and I switched to communications. And this was actually like inspired by Camila because she's like, Jara, like, what, what are you doing? Like, cause I, I was always doing homework, always like busting my ass, yeah. like doing whatever. And she's like, Jara, like, like you can just switch majors. Like why, why are you in this one major? And I was like, honestly, yeah. So then I switched my Good major, idea. like yeah. literally like, like that, like yeah. that. It was because I was, I was talking to her and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going. And then, um, and then now I'm a communications major because it's just like easy and I have, I can do whatever I want with it. Yeah. And then recently I was like, oh, do I want to even go to college? Which is like a big deal if I like don't, Dude, if, I, if I don't finish college, go to college, my dad's oh, yeah. parents will be like, what are you doing? Recently I just got um, full time at the job I'm working at in Montecito, which is amazing. So I'm working more and that's why I'm able to like move out of my house soon. Yeah. Um, and so because of that, like it's a really good paying job and like the company's amazing. It's called Malia Mills, shout out. <laughs> Love go. them. You gotta um, plug something. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's a very, it, it is a very like um, feminist company, which I really love. And it's um, it's a very small but mighty like store. Yeah. Um, and we have a lot of different stores around the, the country. And we make bra size swimwear and like, um, like things that will fit all women, just yeah. not one, one type of woman. So I love, I love their message and, and like Inclusive. empowering women. Yeah, yeah. So I love the store. Um, and so just working there I'm like I could just do this my entire life like just work here like it's good like I, like it's amazing but I don't want to yeah it's like for now like that's what I'm doing and so I'm kind of like open to like just doing whatever else like comes to mind and I'm always thinking like when I'm this age I'm going to be the successful blah 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 or when I'm this age I'm going to be like whatever what but is success for you just like making money for, not for me, but for like my family or like just like in general. How about for you though? For me, I think just like being happy, being at peace with myself and not being silenced. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's kind of what I want. That's what I want. That's why I'm kind of like debating like, what do I want to do? Yeah. Um, and I just, I recently decided that like, I should stop thinking about who I'm going to be and like be who I want to be right now and like do what I want to do instead of waiting for it to come to me. You know what I mean? Take action. Take action. So like, okay, let me, let me like make my website for my art and start, start off there. Let me, you know, figure out like get a modeling agency or like just make things happen now so I can like build it up for the future instead of just waiting for the future to come to me. Yeah. Cause I'm like, if I'm 30, I'll feel the same way. I'll be like, oh. I wanna do these I want, things. Or like, or like, I'll just be like, I, I don't wanna waste time. You know what I mean? Thinking that I'll be something in the future or like, oh, when I finish college, I'll have this great job. Like, I feel like I always like thought that way, but I'm like, I shouldn't think that way. I should just be and do so I can have like a little starting place and then it'll be better in the future. It'll blossom, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of my, my thought process of life right now. Um. <laughs> Spirituality. Yeah, okay. Oh my God, there's so many things. Hit me with it. Crazy, okay, so 
Um, when I was working at Lucky Llama, I met this friend. She's Christian, and so she, I, I never thought like I would ever like be Christian or like think about that because I was like, oh, like religion is crazy or like because mm -hmm. of my background. Um, and she kind of was like talking to me, talking to me about religion, and like we were being very like deep with each other like a lot of the time. And we talked about our like life experiences, like like this. Like I kind of told like everything in my life. Yeah. <laughs> um, and she was like, "Oh my God, you're Hannah Montana," because like Hannah Montana like switches roles mm -hmm. like all the time. And she's like, "Jar, you like leave your house and you're like one person. You you come back to, like a different person, or like you're always like." Well, you have two different identities, identities because basically. you have one that's yourself, and then the other that you have to portray. Portray. Yeah. So yeah, it's damn. really funny that <laughs> she said that. But um, she she kind of so there was this one day where I where my dad was being very emotional. Like he, he was he was just like having a bad day or something and he was like sad. So I, I, I like never seen him like sad. He's always like criticizing or like being like annoying. And I was like, and, and I felt really sad that he was like sad or like he was just like hurt by like his mom or something that happened yeah. at home. And, and, and I prayed, I was like, please God, like if you're there, like I don't know if you're Allah, I don't know if you're like Jesus, I don't know what God to believe in, but like if you're, if you're any God, please like send me a sign, like send me anything, like please help me. Like I was like pleading, I was like, I don't know what to do with my life. Like I, I'm so confused, like what is happening with everything? Like what do I believe in? Like, yeah. you know, even though like I kind of had like some type of idea of what I believe in, you know, I still was like confused. And my friend um, took me to her church. It was like this like collective thing. It was like for like youth or whatever. And I went there and I, and it was like a, it wasn't, I wasn't supposed to like go. It was just like, oh, you can, you might as well come hang out. Like we're not really like doing anything. Like if you want to stay longer, cause we were just hanging out um, where she was. And we went and it was very like, I, I felt very like calm and at peace and everyone felt like, like was re like really free yeah. to like what I saw of them. And everyone was like dancing and like, they were playing like rock music or something yeah, and it was like very free yeah. yeah and i was like wait this is not the church i remember because i've gone to camila's church actually and the first was time it I, catholic yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, no it's baptist, baptist okay okay um and when i went there i um the preacher was talking about like how homosexuality is a sin <laughs> so i was like okay this may not be the <laughs> place, not be the for place. Me. so then that's kind of how i thought like church was and it was very like structured and like rigid and i was like oh but then when i went to my friends it was like very like uplifting everyone was like dancing being yeah. free like and i was like wait this is i kind of want to be like free like this like i, like I don't know vibe. i like this vibe yeah and i had already like like going through like my life like i i went from like being like muslim to being like athe atheist and then being agnostic and being like i don't know what i want bouncing what i am around, yeah. so I, I, kept, I kept bouncing around and then uh, and then i came to the conclusion i was like okay you know what i'm i like i, I just sat with myself one day and i was like i believe like in a higher power like I believe that there's this energy that has created us or whatever I don't know what it is I don't know if it's Allah I don't know if it's God I don't know what it is I just I feel like I'm not like I don't have enough information to know you know what I mean most of us don't really know so then um, I don't know going to her church it like opened my mind to like maybe like oh maybe I could like be Christian or maybe I can like under like figure out this other religion that I haven't really yeah. delved much into and only heard like st st stereotypes of it and my friend was telling me how, like, we kind of had the same idea of, like, of religion. She was like, no, religion is fear-based. It's, it's not freeing, but I believe in, like, spirituality and being free and being, like, liberated. And I was like, that's what I feel, because she's like, religion sometimes is forced, and she doesn't feel, feel that way. Mm -hmm. And um, so kind of like her Christianity isn't really, like, the mainstream, which I was like, oh, okay, like, you're kind of, you believe in Jesus and you believe in what he taught, but you're not going to let like, you know, different, um, like, like, I don't know, like other beliefs that are, you know, very um, discriminating, I guess, get to, get to her or whatever. Yeah. So it was kind of like seeing this new perspective. Um, and I kind of felt like, oh, maybe I should like look more into this. And she gave me a Bible and like, I, I was like, like trying to read it too. Um, and so it was kind of like opening me up to that. And then also, I'm also being open up, open up to like other types of spirituality. TikTok is really weird, okay? <laughs> I know it's weird, I know it's weird. Oh, TikTok. But I'm on TikTok and like 
for some reason it like knows what I like and what I want to see and it's talking about like for God. For some reason. Dude, oh. it knows. It dude. knows and it knows everything. For so some it's reason. It's like showing me yeah. all these things about like spirituality and like God and the, and the universe. And so it's kind of like, I feel like it helped me like see what other people are like saying and like thinking. And like I, some people have like the same, the similar like ideas and stuff. Um, Honestly, I don't know where I'm going with this, but going, where was dude. I going with this? I like this? it. You're talk we're just talking about yeah, spirituality. spirituality. Like your spirituality. Yeah. So like I guess still my spirituality is very like not defined to like one thing. Yeah. I feel like I've been I'm pulling from things that make sense to me, I guess. And I guess what I wanna say in general is for everyone to kind of pull like what pull from like what what makes sense to them not just from what they've been taught and kind of like be open to other things because you might never know like what you might learn about or feel or see or whatever um and because i feel like a lot of people are, like have a hard time being more open to things and kind of like saying the same like like saying the same and like not really like delving into other things. I feel like that's kind of how I was. Well, until, because they're comfortable. Yeah. Like comfortable. people don't want to like, <clears throat> I'm not saying all people, but not a lot people. of people yeah. like they enjoy being comfortable. Um, not even only in like what they do, but like who they are and their beliefs because it's, it's easy. Yeah. Um, and honestly, like, like part of me, like having you on this podcast is like, you have like, you have a background in things and it's not that I'm uncomfortable with it. I'm definitely not making that clear uh but uh it's like just different it's different and it's like it, it, it like challenges like my mind because it's so much different than like what i was like yeah what what do you believe what do you mean like what what are you talking about right now like what's your i think well i i believe everything that that you say i think just like like i grew up in a very white straight <laughs> privileged like in like I mean it's it's a yeah. really great place like skiing every single day and like we all like there was no real like there was I mean I guess there's like discrimination and stuff like that but like there's not a lot of like challenge besides like the physical challenge um, that we grew up with just because of like the nature of like everyone is an athlete and stuff yeah. like that um, so it's not I'm I'm just trying to open my mind to someone yeah. like you. Whereas, like, and, like, the people listening to this, maybe they're doing that because yeah. they haven't met someone like you before. And then they can be like, oh, like, this is someone. Worlds. And they're, they're different. They're a unique world. Exactly. Uh, so I think it's, it's thank you yeah. for yeah, sharing your story and stuff like that. Because I think that you're enabling people to, to do that. And it's pretty, it's easier on a podcast when you can just listen or watch yeah. than having to, like, do it yourself. But yeah. I think it's a good uh, first step. So yeah. that's what I meant by that. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Um, but so you, you were just talking more, yeah, your spirituality. Yeah, because I, I guess, I guess like recently I've just been trying to like figure out everything and I've been reading like books like um, The Untethered Soul. Okay. And like I'm right now reading like Seed of, Seed of the Soul. So it's like a lot about like spirituality, but not in a way that's like religious mm -hmm. really, but just like not scientific. I don't know what the word is. It's just like a little bit different than usual. It's it's like a self-help in a way. Mm -hmm. I guess I guess I guess how I um, like you we were talking about like my art and how that's the way I like Expression. express myself, but yeah. also like learning things and like reading about spirituality or like figuring out life in that way also helps me like feel fulfilled more fulfilled than I am because of like my situation, you know? Yeah. And so I feel like that's something I use to help me cope. It, maybe with it's your situation. With, with my situation. Yeah. Like even, even maybe it's real, maybe it's not, I don't know. Like for myself, I feel like it might be something that I use to cope for like what's happening like in my life and not, cause, cause right now I'm like all chill about it, I guess. But like in real life, like it's like, a, it's like hard. It's like hard, like, Thing to be experiencing every day I'm just it's crazy how open you are and 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 like well one question that I think a lot of people are gonna be having is like you're talking about like your experiences and who you are mm -hmm. on like a public forum yeah that like theoretic like your parents could theoretically yeah. find this so, I know so then so, what made you decide that you feel open to like be talking about these things so here? for me I actually wrote an article about all of this okay actually and what's the, the name and of it's the gonna article? be posting it's called folding chair magazine Okay. And it's about like bringing a chair and starting a movement. Like you're 
Like if, if there's no seat for you at the table, bring a chair, like bring a folding you chair, one. you know what? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's kind of about that. I like that. And I talked about just like my voice and my beliefs of like social justice and everything like that. Um, and like my life and whatever. And, um, and I was open to that. And my Instagram is public so anyone can find it. So I'm open in that way. So if, if my parents like find it, like that's like okay. Like that's, a, that's I, I kind of feel like the universe like will let things happen like when, when they're supposed to happen. I don't know, I, I feel like the universe is- It's almost like you're, so you don't want to tell them explicitly about uh -huh. who you are, uh -huh. but you're leaving the door open. I'm leaving the door open, yeah. I guess. So I'm kind of like- That's Because crazy. I remember like wow. um, when the whole, when like just, when things like the day of silence happen or things like that, it, it, it made me grow as a person or like just like everything I've experienced made me grow as, as an individual. Um, and so I'm kind of, I guess I am leaving the door open because I really like, I don't, care if they find out or not it is like a big deal and it's like it's going to be crazy but i yeah. feel like i trust the universe in a way that they'll let things happen naturally and make sure i don't know i feel like i'm being very optimistic in that way um but that's i mean that's, but that's just how than... that's just how i feel that's why i'm like oh i'll do a podcast oh i'll make a movie like if i if i'm in a movie and i'm doing something um that is deemed like not good for my parents or whatever like let it happen it happened and if I have to explain myself, like, I'll do whatever we'll do I have so. to do. You know what yeah. I mean? So I kind of, like, I feel like I live on the edge. That's what my friend said. Like, I live, I literally live, like, my Instagram, like, I, can't, I still can't believe, like, my parents could find it, like, any day. Yeah. And I just leave it like that. And they could be like, hmm, why is there a, a gay flag on your, on your bio or anything else? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, do they have, like, would would they have a manner to be able to find this? Like, do they have yeah. social media? So my actually, my sister, some some person in Senegal found my sister's Instagram and took screenshots sent it to my mom. Which was what? Does and she it, have like and my a, sister has like bikini pictures and all this stuff. Wow. And we're not supposed to like we're wearing that. My, yeah. my mom was so my, my mom was like Ida, like you're asking for it. Like this is really bad. Like you should be asking for what? Just for like Going male attention. Or, or, oh, like, okay, you know. got it. Um, and so. That happened for her, but for me, um, it actually did happen once. Like, so I, my dad followed me on Instagram a long time ago, and then this whole business happened. And then I blocked him, and I made my friends block him. Wow! I texted, I was like, Camila, block him. Like my, like Leah and like you were all my friends. Because yeah, it was like this whole thing that happened. It was like a, it was, I feel like it was Does like he a have very, an Instagram? yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So he could like Prop make to a, you. That's but ballsy. I, I know it's like, ballsy. Yeah, but. For some reason, I'm just like, let life happen how Yolo. it happens, you know? Yeah. Um, so you, oh. what was that story? So you, your friends blocked him and stuff like that? Yeah, so it was, oh my God, I feel like this is another story that I have to tell. Oh God, okay. Um, so what happened? Um, it was like 4th of July. Oh my God, this is gonna go deep again. Go off. Um, 4th of July and I, um, I wore like a dress to the beach, but I, I, I like went, well, when my dad like dropped me off or when I was picked up or whatever, I was like wearing my regular clothes or whatever. Which are what? I forgot, it was like probably like, jeans, like a sweatshirt, like something so like, that's like, that's like. that's your dad like wants you in. It's like basically like, or like a like bag, a <laughs> or bag. like a sheet or something. Um, and so I, so then I was like, I think I was hot. And my friend was like, oh, Jar, you can wear, like, wear my dress or whatever. And I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cute. I love it. And, my, and me and Camille took a picture at the, took a picture like at the, it wasn't at the beach, it was somewhere else. But I made sure to wear like, like, a, like a sweater so that she can post it. Mm -hmm. And I did. And my dad saw the picture and he like zoomed in or something. And then he saw like a little slip of like the of dress. Skin. Oh, okay. Of skin, of, dress, of skin yeah. and the dress. And then he like comes to my room like being like, what is this? Like blah, blah, blah. And he got super pissed. Like wow. it was like this whole ordeal. Like it was like a huge, like the same, same with like the day of sounds. It was like another huge thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I feel like after all these huge things happened, I decided to like be more like secret about everything and just stop like being to just like kind of take measures so i feel like also like me taking taking all the precautions like i always take precaution like i'm always like like i feel like i have like some type of anxiety where i'm like trying to like make sure that nothing goes wrong with everything that i do so i don't get caught you know so it's, it's like a game almost for me wow <laughs> so it's a is, hell of a game dude. right it's a game because it's like oh someone's after me like i can get caught any moment like i'm literally living a game like Living, living on the a game edge. and living on the edge. Yeah. Being Hannah Montana in a way. 
Um, so it was kind of like that. And so that day, like I was like, guys, block him. And if you post, like you can post, but just whatever. Didn't you say though that you, if if like he did find it, then you would. But that was when I was like younger. But oh, okay. but, but but like he could find it any day. Like it, it is public, and like he could make a new Instagram and like find me. You know what yeah. I mean? But that hasn't happened yet. But I guess right now I'm at a point where I'm like. I can take care of myself, like, if he finds it, like, that's his problem, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's my parents' problem. Um, but, yeah. Wow. That's so funny. Crazy. I forgot what we were ta even talking about before. Yeah, okay, I don't even know what else to talk about that. It's just kind of like a, I'm, I feel like I'm just trying to be more in tune with the universe and being open to receiving what they, what the universe, like, gives. Because I feel like life is crazy. I don't know. I don't life know what to say crazy. about it. That's a good, I think that's a good concluding. Concluding. Life is crazy. Life and is crazy. Just YOLO. So, I feel like I have the be privilege, I have the privilege to be Hannah Montana and to say YOLO sometimes. So I guess. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. <laughs> any last words? Um, pick a camera, any camera. Pick a camera. Oh. Peace, love. Peace, love, joy, be joy. yourself. Be yourself, even though I sometimes can't be. <laughs> um, <laughs> do it for me, please, everyone. Yeah. Um, speak your truth, you know. Figure out what, what makes you happy, you know. Hell yeah.